Hello and welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is doing well today. Since my last video, I've had a couple of projects that I've been working on. One project came directly from the comments section after multiple comments related to, it looks like you're reading a script in your videos. All I can say to that is, well, yeah, of course I'm reading a script. For all of the videos that aren't shot run in gun style on my cell phone, I write out a script, edit it to make sure that the ideas and concepts that I'm trying to convey are going to be easily understood. Then I sit in front of my camera, recording it over and over until I finally get a version of it that isn't absolutely terrible. So I decided that I should take heed to the counsel I was getting from the comment section and go shopping for a teleprompter. I have to say that I was a little taken aback to see that a box with one of the sides set at 45 degrees and a 10 by 12 inch piece of single strength glass was going for $150. So instead of just being done with it and pressing buy it now, I decided to spend about $600 worth of time and $25 in material to fabricate my own. As with all of my projects, I started out by drawing it up in AutoCAD and nesting the flat patterns to fit on my laser cutter. Next, I transferred the files, set up the plywood sheets, and pressed go. After that, all that was left was to paint the insides of the pieces black and slot and tab it together. Poof! A teleprompter! It looks as though, by incorporating the teleprompter into my video production, that I'm able to get rid of the terrible reflections that I get in my glasses when I shoot my videos sitting at my desk, looking out the window. My other project, the one that I think my subscribers will find much more interesting, is a glue-on mod for the PlayStation 3 controller. As you can imagine, since I lost my fingers, my super elite gaming skills have suffered dramatically when it comes to pressing L1 or L2 on the controller. To remedy this, I designed a resin printed attachment that holds a couple buttons and servos. The way this gadget works is when I press on the clicky button on the side of the device, it sends a signal to the microcontroller that then tells the servo to move and press on the controller buttons. Initially, I was sure that I would want or need a rapid fire function, but so far, the games that I've been playing don't have much of a need for that function, so I don't have it activated. But if or when I do realize the need, I'll modify the software so that the button on top switches between single and repeated pressing of the controller button. The dial on the front will vary the cycle speed of the rapid fire. Now it's been years since I've dedicated the time it takes to play a video game all the way through. And even now, I don't see myself spending a ton of time playing video games. But this device isn't exactly for me. It's for someone that used to play video games on the regular, and unfortunately, recently found themselves becoming a member of the illustrious Missing Parts Club. Hopefully this will be a total game changer for them. Regaining the ability to immerse themselves in video games just might be the thing that brings them out of the depression that goes along with suddenly finding themselves without some of their OEM parts. So let's take a look at what went into creating this little device. As with all of my projects, I started out by modeling the stock controller and all of the electrical components in AutoCAD. For this device, I'm using two 9-gram microservos, three 12mm tactile momentary switches, a 10K potentiometer, and a 5-volt trinket pro. If you plan on following along, you're also going to need an FTDI programming cable, because the bootloader on the trinket pro doesn't work with Windows 10. I'll leave a link to the components in the description. I'm sure that you're aware but I get a small kickback if you choose to buy anything from Amazon after clicking on my affiliate link. By doing that, it helps me upgrade the equipment that goes into developing and prototyping these prosthetic devices. So if that's something you end up doing, thanks a lot. Now that that's out of the way, let's get back to the project. The first iteration of the trigger mechanism was designed to use a pair of force sensitive resistors to generate an analog signal where the harder you press on the buttons, the faster the controller buttons would be cycled. It was great in concept, but not all that awesome in the real world. Another change that took place throughout these revisions was the progressive deletion of all of the linkage assemblies that I used to connect the servos to the controller buttons. The first version used a set of parallel four links to translate the servo motion to the controller buttons. On the final version, I managed to move everything around so I was able to delete all of the linkages so that the servos directly contacted the controller. That series of changes reduced the total number of printed parts down to just two, the body and the cover. After I printed one up and sanded everything so I had a nice tight fit to the body of the controller, 
The next thing that I needed to tackle was the wiring and programming of the components. I set up the components on the breadboard and started writing the code for it. A lot of the code is made up by simply cutting and pasting from the example programs available in the Arduino IDE. The switches are wired in pull-up configuration, so I could wire them in parallel using one common wire and three signal wires, one for each switch. Had I wired them in pull-down configuration, I would have had to also include a set of pull-down resistors wired to ground. One of the cool things about using the square clicky switches is that there are two extra solder points on the switch bodies that can really help out in situations like this, where the space for the wiring is really tight. Eventually I'll model up and print one of these devices for the PS4 and likely the PS5 once I manage to get one in a year or so. Unless of course someone feels so inclined as to kick one down for Christmas. Totally unlikely, but I'll let you know if something like that happens. I also want to take a moment and sincerely thank everyone that has taken the time to subscribe to my channel. I really cannot express how much I appreciate it, and hopefully I'm able to return the favor and inspire a bunch of people to come up with amazing projects for the market sector, because there really is a need for devices designed for partial hand amputees. The problem lies in that for someone that has the same disarticulation as I do, at the metacarpals, you have too much hand for one set of options and too little for another. Say I had lost my hand to the wrist. There are all kinds of amazing devices available. Of course, none as good as the original hardware, but still just as amazing. And if I still had the proximal bones of my hand, there are a couple fantastic devices that manage to restore both the length and dexterity to the hand. But in my case, where the disarticulation happens at the metacarpals, there just aren't a lot of options that are strong enough for daily use out in the wild. That's where my focus is primarily directed, developing partial hand prosthetics at the metacarpal level. And hopefully, with all the views that my videos get, my projects will be shared and eventually be seen by the right set of eyes so that the products that I've come up with can be made available to the people that are in need. I want to reiterate that I really do have the best subscribers in the whole of YouTube. The other day I had a subscriber from Budapest track me down and send me a postcard with a note stating how much they love my mechanical hand project. How amazing is that? I really do love to read and interact with subscribers that take the time to post in the comment section. In other news, I've been making quite a bit of progress on the Ash vs. Evil Dead Chainsword, and I'll be sure to share it with you in the next video. I've also been working on the designs for the Compound Link Finger. It's just about ready to make a physical prototype. I've run it through FEA and simulation, and it looks pretty good. The only thing that I don't really like with this design is that the joints are in single shear rather than a double, like my other designs. But I'll be able to see if that's going to be a deal breaker here in the near future. Well that's all I have for you today. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share my videos so that my projects have a better chance of getting out there. And if you have time, leave a comment in the comments section and let me know what you think. I hope everyone is safe and healthy with all the crazy going on. Hopefully you're able to keep a little bit of sanity if you're in a lockdown state like I am. Thanks for watching.